Hello. For my last lesson on electricity, I'd like to give you a tour of various circuit components that can sometimes show up in circuits that serve different purposes. Here's a list of a couple different ideas. We'll talk about switches and fuses, capacitors, diodes, transistors, inductors, transformers, that is the real transformers, not the uh, comic book characters, and uh, a couple other things perhaps too. So, First of all, um, a very common component in a circuit is some sort of a switch. Um, you use them every day and you don't even think about them, um, but a switch uh, basically controls current flow by either connecting or disconnecting uh, wires, um, either breaking or connecting a loop. The symbol, um, if you see a switch in a circuit drawn in somewhere, uh, the symbol would look like this. Uh, it kind of mimics what's called a knife switch uh, that you can see. If I have this closed, then circuit uh, current can flow, and if I lift it up, then current can't flow. Uh, so your light switch um, kind of hides that, but that's basically what it does. It either sends current through or doesn't send current through. Um, buttons can do the same thing. Uh, in fact, your keyboard, when you press a key on your keyboard, it uh, connects uh, the circuit temporarily and sends just a brief signal uh, to the processor to tell it, hey, I typed F. So that's a switch. Um, one thing that uh, you might have, uh, I know I have it in my basement, is uh, it's called a three-way switch. Uh, I'm not sure why it's called a three-way and not a two-way switch, it never made sense to me, but um, basically there's two different switches. I got one on either end of the hall that uh, I can turn on and off, and it always amazed me that, wait a minute, if I'm disconnecting this, if I'm breaking this circuit, um, how come I can go turn it on on the other side if it's broken on this end? Uh, here's one of many wire diagrams that uh, I found online that uh, helps explain it a little bit. So right now the lights are not showing. But if I were to all of a sudden turn this on, then I've got uh, a, a circuit that goes all the way through. And uh, if I were to go over to the other side and, and flip the switch, now all of a sudden it's, it's off. I've got uh, broken wire and broken wire on this side. But uh, if I were to go back here, even though this one is, in my mind at least, it was broken, um, if I were to all of a sudden connect uh, flip the switch back, now it connects through this one. So kind of an ingenious little setup that uh, allows you to control um, light bulbs from, from different switches. And uh, I would imagine that uh, you could probably set this up with multiple wires um, so that uh, you could have maybe three or four different uh, light switches controlling a light bulb. Um, I'm not sure how complicated the diagram would be, but uh, Check it out. I, I, I bet it's possible. So, another component that shows up in a lot of circuits is called a fuse. And uh, a fuse is uh, designed to break if current gets too high. Um, that's a safety mechanism. If current gets higher, then the wires that contain that current will get hotter. And uh, if it gets too hot, it um, has the potential to melt that uh, insulation and perhaps start a fire. And so, a fuse is designed. To uh, to break and cut off that current so that it doesn't get to that hot, dangerous uh, spot. Usually it's made out of some sort of a metal device that uh, would just um, melt if it has too much current in there and then it breaks and, and that's no usable anymore. So if that's the case, uh, if a fuse does break, then you have to replace it. And so uh, usually you'd like to figure out what happened, why did it break, first of all, and you know, do I have a short circuit somewhere, do I have too many things plugged in at once, um, but if you can fix that, then find the fuse that's broken and take it out and replace it with, uh, um, with a new one. So uh, the symbol that I've seen most often in circuits uh, is this one, but uh, a couple other different symbols might be used to indicate a fuse. So uh, another component that uh, shows up in a lot of circuits is called a circuit breaker. And a circuit breaker is really not too much different than a fuse. Uh, it's designed to turn off when current gets too hot. Uh, but uh, rather than breaking like a fuse, um, it's a switch. Uh, and uh, somewhere um, a switch gets flipped automatically. Um, and so rather than uh, replacing them, you just have to find the switch and turn it off. So for me, uh, I've got this giant box 
Um, I've got one in my basement, and uh, I've got one in my garage. And so if, if something, uh, if I were to blow a circuit, I'd have to go and, and flip that switch again. Uh, or in our bathroom and in our kitchen, we've got uh, devices like this. And uh, if for some reason um, you uh, blow a circuit there, um, make sure you figured out why. If you've got a hair dryer that fell into the bathtub, for instance, um, take it, unplug it, take the hair dryer out of the bathtub, and then you may uh, um, flip the, the breaker again. But uh, then everything should be good again. So just a nice safety device to prevent uh, too much current from causing uh, overheating or making fire. So. Uh, another circuit component um, is what's called a diode. And uh, a diode is kind of a nice tool that uh, it acts a lot like a valve. It uh, allows current uh, to go in one direction easily. And ideally, it would block current in the other direction. Um, but there's lots of different variations of diodes. Um, some work better than others. Some allow current in the reverse direction, uh, but less current, uh, and so forth. Um, in general, the uh, symbol that's used to indicate a diode is a uh, symbol like this. And uh, the arrow indicates the direction uh, of current. So current would flow nicely in this direction. And uh, ideally, it would not flow in reverse. Sometimes a little bit still sneaks through. But um, And uh, in general, uh, diodes do not follow the typical Ohm's law relationship. Um, but uh, you can see how V and I and R are related uh, by looking at a graph. Here's just a couple different uh, examples. This would be the perfect um, diode that doesn't allow any volt current when you've got a negative voltage and allows infinite current uh, through on the other side. Uh, no restrictions, no resistance on the other side. Um, here's a few others that are a little bit more realistic. Um, but uh, still, that's, uh, that's what a diode does. You don't normally see them in uh, the DC circuits we've been working with because um, there's not really a, a huge need for them. DC means uh, direct current, one-way current. Um, and so it already is one-way current. You don't need to put a valve in there to, to keep it going in one way. Um, but uh, you will see them a lot when there's alternating current um, to maybe prevent it from going one direction. Or uh, sometimes you can use a, a couple of them in series or in parallel to convert um, alternating current into uh, direct current. Um, so that's a, that's a diode. Uh, a very common diode that I'm sure you've seen is uh, an LED. Um, an LED is, uh, stands for light emitting diode. And uh, um, it's basically, uh, it just lights up when current runs through it. So it's used quite a bit for um, status uh, symbols on like a, um, on some sort of a circuit. If a diode's on there, then that means it's in a certain mode or uh, there's certain, um, there's current that goes through it. So it's the same basic symbol, but uh, with the little arrows that come off of it, that indicates light leaving. So if you ever work with a diode, you should notice that one side usually is uh, taller than the other. Um, one pin is longer than the other. That's the side that uh, should be connected on the positive side, and current would flow in this direction through the diode. So if you accidentally set that up in reverse, then uh, um, your light won't break, or your, your, yeah, your LED won't light up. So uh, they're kind of nice because they use very little power, uh, and, and you can have extremely low voltage. Uh, most of these diodes will work with just one or two volts or so on them. Um, in fact, if you have um, a high amount of volts, uh, like uh, I hooked one up to a six volt battery, and uh, before I knew it, it uh, had broken. So you sometimes have to be careful that uh, you limit the voltage that goes across them. But, um, another really useful uh, component in a circuit is a, a variable resistor. A uh, variable resistor is a resistor that can somehow be um, adjusted. And so um, uh, I have a resistor that uh, is just a, a giant coil like this. And uh, depending on where you connect Here's the one wire, and, and whether I connect the wire here, or here, or here, or here, um, 
the more of the coil it has to go through, the higher the resistance. If I cut it, connect it right here, I've got a very low resistance. So that's a, kind of a primitive variable resistor that uh, you just kind of connect it in various locations. Um, I got another one that uh, there's a slider, and so um, as I slide it from side to side, um, that shortens or lengthens the resistor. So that's a nice tool. And uh, I'm sure you've turned a knob, like a volume knob or something like that. Um, that's essentially uh, a variable resistor. Here's kind of a picture of what's happening internally. If you turn the knob, um, this will go further and further along and increase the resistance more and more. Um, so that's a, a very useful tool. A joystick um, on a controller is uh, very often connected somehow to some sort of a variable resistor. And so that's a very useful tool. Uh, the symbol with the, the arrow drawn through it uh, indicates a variable resistor in a circuit. Uh, transistors, a uh, very useful component as well. Um, I wish somebody had told me a long time ago that a transistor acted like uh, an amplifier. Uh, I spent three weeks studying it in an electronics class in uh, college, and uh, I could do all sorts of calculations with it uh, and uh, even make things in it, but I, I didn't really understand what I was doing. I didn't get it. Um, Finally, somebody said, dude, it's just an amplifier, um, and all of a sudden, it made sense. So I'm telling you that now. Um, so hopefully, um, if you study this in college, you'll, you'll at least know what, what it's doing um, and not just do random math. So um, usually, you've got a signal, um, low voltage signal or something like that that comes in, um, and then um, across the other end, you can produce uh, a higher, a uh, multiplied amount of voltage or current. Um, and uh, probably the most common use for this um, is uh, to take some sort of a, uh, an audio signal, um, like your voice and your telephone, for instance, that goes through there, um, and then amplify it enough so that uh, your speakers can produce something that you can hear. So, of course, you could set the transistor up in reverse and uh, divide your voltage down. And so on, on one end, you've got a transistor that reduces voltage uh, so that you can send a signal. And then on the other end, you've got it so that it multiplies. So that's a transistor. Um, one of my favorite songs, Brown Eyed Girl, uh, talks about a transistor radio in there, kind of an old uh, reference to when the radios were first made that were kind of handheld that you could carry through. They had transistors in them. So. Anyhow, capacitors. Capacitors are very useful uh, tools that uh, store energy in them. And somebody told me a long time ago that they stored charge and uh, messed me up for a long time. Uh, the, the idea of it storing charge is, is misleading in a lot of different ways. Uh, what it does is it stores energy by producing an imbalance of charge. There's more positive on one side of a plate uh, and negative on the other side of a, a two metal plates. Uh, that's why the schematic is what it is, uh, just a line with two lines drawn through it. Um, a very useful analogy I thought was uh, uh, this kind of water basin that has this um, barrier in the middle of it. And so when you um, push on it on this side, uh, that is when you apply voltage, um, you might be able to increase the pressure here and push this back a little bit. That's called charging the capacitor. Um, so here's the one that's very charged. And if all of a sudden you were to disconnect the voltage, then um, this could discharge and it could rebalance and kind of push through uh, some current. So a um, couple properties of a capacitor. Um, you don't. Well, you might see them in a DC circuit, but uh, uh, when they are in a DC circuit, they typically will block current. Uh, as you can see in this uh, analogy here, water can't flow through uh, because there's this, this barrier here. So they, they block current. However, if you were to push on this a little bit, um, you will see that this moves, this stretches. And in order to do that, there's got to be some room made through. So some current can sometimes get through. Um, when you first start to charge um, a capacitor. And of course, when you discharge it, then this will go out and it'll um, 
cause current to go through too. So when charging or discharging, they might allow a little bit of current, um, but in general, they block um, D, uh, DC, that is direct current. So uh, that might be one of the reasons you use it. Uh, sometimes you want to block out direct current and just look at alternating current, kind of filter out uh, various types of, of current. Um, they do allow changing current, and uh, that's because if you push on one side, some does come out, and then when you push back on this side, some can go out this way. Um, they do allow alternating current without uh, too much difficulty. So, and uh, uh, probably their most useful application is that they can store a lot of energy, and uh, depending on how you have it set up, they might be able to release that energy quite quickly, more quickly than you could do with just a regular battery, for instance. Um, a camera flash definitely uh, has a capacitor in its heart, uh, or a, a taser um, definitely has uh, capacitors in there to help um, produce really high uh, amounts of current for a brief amount of time. Um, another tool um, is uh, called an inductor, and uh, inductors are very easy to, to make. You can take a wire and wrap it around something and you've created an inductor. But uh, uh, what an inductor does is it stores energy um, in a magnetic field. And uh, the, one of the most common reasons to, to use an inductor is uh, to kind of stabilize current. Um, I'm not sure if you can talk about inductors as having a purpose, but the, their, their goal in a circuit is to maintain current, whatever it was at. So. Um, if current was nothing and all of a sudden you apply some voltage to it, it's going to resist that for a little bit um, and try to keep the current at zero. If the current is at one amp, uh, pretty steady at one amp, and all of a sudden you increase voltage, it's going to try to limit that. Or if all of a sudden voltage dies, um, it's going to continue to provide one amp for a little bit um, until the magnetic field, um, the energy that's stored in there, goes away. And so. Um, it's very often used to kind of steady out um, a current when uh, the input voltage might not be uh, always there. So in DC circuits especially, um, they allow direct current very easily. Uh, they tend to filter out alternating current um, or sudden current changes. And uh, their most useful application, um, besides evening out things, is uh, when you combine them with capacitors, um, capacitors tend to filter out the low uh, voltage uh, or, or the low frequency uh, changes and um, inductors tend to filter out high frequency changes and if you've got uh, the right combination of them you can tune uh, to a specific frequency and just listen in on um, well, kind of giving away, like in a radio, for instance, you can just listen into um, a specific frequency that you're interested in. Um, inductors also can be used, uh, and you may have made an uh, electromagnet with one, uh, wrap it around, say, a metal. Um, this very simple diagram uh, would make this nail um, a very strong magnet, and uh, the higher the voltage and the, the more coils that you have, uh, the stronger a magnet that you can create. You put a switch on here. Um, and all of a sudden, you've got a, a magnet that you can turn on and off and on and off. So, very useful. The last circuit component I want to show you is uh, a transformer. And uh, a transformer is basically a way of converting voltage. Um, so, if you want, if you have 110 volts and you need 100, 220 volts, for instance, uh, you can set up um, two inductors, basically, right uh, next to each other. Um, so here's a coil uh, that's wrapped around a piece of metal, and, and there's um, uh, another wire that's got more cable coils on this side. And uh, the differences in voltage is proportional to the differences in coils. So uh, here, uh, wrapped around five times, five coils with 110 volts. And over here, uh, 10 coils gives us 220. If we uh, did uh, 100 coils, that would bring it up to 2,200. Um, and so uh, it's very easy to change from one voltage to another um, using a transformer. And in fact, you've probably seen these sorts of things all over the place on, uh, um, on power poles, um, 
maybe you've seen some other boxes and things like that um, in some uh, appliances or if you've taken apart a, a VCR or a, a DVD player or something like that. So I'm sure there's a transformer in there somewhere um, that uh, takes voltage that comes in and, and at 110 and reduces it to whatever is necessary uh, for that uh, particular device. So that's a transformer and uh, that's just a, a bunch of different tools that can be used to, uh, to help control current and, and cause really interesting things to happen. Um, I think it's amazing how well these things can all be uh, designed and work together um, to create things that you don't even have to think about um, but, uh, but that you can use. So thanks for watching and uh, tune back in next month as uh, we study a new unit.